The following is a presentation of the Pro Wrestling Report, TV and radio. Informative, entertaining, and real since 1998. Live from the 540 ESPN studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, this is the Pro Wrestling Report with David Hero, Frank Cosentino, Linda Kay, and your host, Damian Nelson. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN. We are live Thursday, special Thursday edition of the show, August 18, 2011. Joined here by the lovely Linda Kay and David Octavius, the Tiber- Tiberius hero. You know what? I just really pay attention to that intro. Yeah? You get like the big pop and circumstance, don't you? What do you and mean? And your host, Damian Nelson. Well, I am in charge around here. What the here. heck? Host of the year. Thank you, Linda. I'll uh, add that in there. That's the problem. It doesn't say host of the year, right? Understood. Yeah. Well, we're coming off the heels of Impact Wrestling, which was on Spike TV tonight. And you know what, David? Here, I'd like to start the show with the challenge. Who watched it? And. <laughs> I was kidding. And. Mm-hmm. What was good about it? Or what was bad about it? I want to hear some phone callers tonight who want to talk about TNA and Impact Wrestling. Uh, TNA is on now. It was Impact Wrestling was on the first two hours. Impact Wrestling was on the first two hours, followed by, um, uh, yes, some Hooters. wings. Well, their their wings are on sale. Uh, but we want to hear, and that's what's going to happen when we go into the phone zone at the bottom of the hour. What did you think of Impact? What do you think of TNA Wrestling right now? And... If you're thinking about calling us and saying it sucks, be ready to say because. Yeah, well, if you're getting ready to call us sucks. and say it's great, be ready to say because right after that. Because we want to hear some intelligent discussion tonight on Impact Wrestling and the state of TNA Wrestling. Should be interesting. We're going to take those phone calls at the following numbers. 414-276-ESPN. 414-276-3776. Or 1-800-990-ESPN. 1-800-990-3776. The fans are finally getting their TNA show, their Impact Wrestling show. We're going to try. I guarantee you, though, that there's no way we're going to fill the next one hour and 55 minutes of TNA talk. We have SummerSlam to talk about. We've got Holy Raw crap. from you this past Monday night. We've got an update on the PWR draft, our YouTube challenge, trivia, vintage video, and talk a little bit about SummerSlam seems so far away, doesn't it? Not really. Oh, for me it does. It seems like it was weeks Why? ago. Because you have such a bad memory, you just don't remember it's it being. It's a great memory. It's just short. And tonight's theme of themes. Oh, boy. It's all about the heavyweights. Here's where I wish my, my memory was short. It's all about the heavyweights. You can go to our Facebook page, which is Facebook.com slash Pro Wrestling Report. And submit your comment as to what theme of themes, the heavyweights, you would love to hear tonight on the Pro Wrestling I'll Report. King Kong Bundy's theme. Well, we have to see if the did fans you, submit that. Did you submit that on our Facebook page, Dave Hero? No, he doesn't I, do I, Facebook. No, I'm blocked from the Facebook page. <laughs> and justifiably so. Ric Flair is back on Impact tonight. Woo! I got to say, Flair was entertaining, as usual. And uh, I also got to say, I didn't miss Ric Flair. And you know what's, what's uh, I don't want to start off on a bad note, but Ric Flair and Sting in the ring at the beginning of Impact tonight. And it's a big deal that they're in the ring and they're going to have a match and Flair is challenging him, icon, icon, blah, 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 blah. I, unfortunately... I just did not have the capacity to care about those two. I just didn't have the capacity to care about Ric Flair and Sting in the ring. I don't have the capacity to care about Ric Flair, Sting, Hulk Hogan, and the matchup between Sting and Hogan coming up at Bound for Glory. I want to care, but I don't have the capacity to care right now. Is that wrong? Am I wrong for feeling that way? Yes, absolutely. Because Sting versus Hulk Hogan with special guest referee Ric Flair at Bound you're, for Glory? You're making that assumption. Wow. Well, I think it's where it's going to head to. 
Have you seen the Bound for Glory poster? No. The man in the middle is Ric Flair. Between Sting and Hogan, Sting's really? in a t-shirt. Yeah. Where's Kenny Anderson on that poster? He's not. Really? Nope. Let me guess. Crimson's on the poster. Uh, I think he might be, along with Beer Money and uh, AJ Styles, perhaps. I don't know. Well, at least Beer Money's for that point. Your boy, uh, Ken Anderson, is, is uh, out indefinitely uh, due to uh, two ruptured eardrums after that attack last week He's on Impact out Wrestling. for this week. He'll be fine. He is a tough son of a gun. He'll be fine. He's the leader of the Super Friends. First round draft pick. Number one overall. Why am I supposed to care about Hogan Flair? Hogan uh, Sting. What else What else are you going to care about? From Impact Wrestling? Yes. Crimson versus Kurt Angle? Are you going to like that one? More so than you Flair, know, and, and Hogan, hold on. and Sting. Before I get all the haters and ripping on me for Hogan and Sting, it's the only storyline they have going on right now. It's the only one that they're investing in. And it, you know what? It might not be a – it probably won't be a good match. Hmm. It'll probably be brutal and suck and, and be everything we don't want it to be. But at the end of the day, fans, Bound for Glory is going to be headlined by Sting and Hulk Hogan with Ric Flair involved. As Tony Schiavone would say, that'll put butts in the seats. It will. You watch. It's going to be in Philadelphia. That is a hardcore wrestling hometown. And a vocal and outspoken wrestling hometown that don't care to see Hogan versus Sting. I disagree. Fourteen years ago we saw it. Mm Mm-hmm. It was a big deal then. It had never okay, happened. Okay, Damien, but here's what the whole thing... Listen, it's going to be on Jay Leno. It'll be on ESPN. Entertainment Night. Hulk Hogan, one last match. I bet you it won't. Okay, you're on. We'll see what happens. It won't. One last... It'll get... Listen, Hogan and Sting will buy... Will get a lot of free press in Philadelphia. Whereas people that may not know about TNA Wrestling yeah. will go to that show because Hulk Hogan's going to be on it. You're exactly right. But not because Hogan's wrestling Sting. There's just no. I, I just it's can't because be convinced. Hulk Hogan's going to be on the show. That's that's going to sell tickets. I must agree. Hogan's a man in a lot of people's eyes, and whether they've watched wrestling for all of their lives, he was. Or... He is. He still You're is. right. He is. What reaction he did he get is. on American Idol? Listen to me. I'm not saying anything bad about you Hulk Hogan. Hulk I'm not Hogan saying sucks. anything bad about Sting. I did not because I've never said a wrestler sucks on any of this broadcast that we've done for the last 14 years. Thank you. What I am saying is that match, that story, this fan doesn't care. That's, it's not for you. It's not for most of us. This is for TNA supposed to sell tickets. That's what it comes down to. I have been looking at our social media feeds via Twitter, Facebook, our chat room on uh, Blog Talk Radio. uh, You're missing the whole thing. It's not being booked for them. It's for Joe Walmart, the casual wrestling fan. That's who this is being booked for. It's not for all the IWC. It's not because they're going to watch it on a free stream. They're looking for wrestling fans that are going to buy tickets. How would you dare classify everybody who is on the in the internet who follows wrestling as a fan who steals pay per views? Most of them do, because they're internet savvy. They know where to look. Come on, Damien. Let's call it what it is. What the point I was making is not Flair Hogan Sting, not that whole situation, but the overall broadcast tonight of Impact Wrestling. I have not seen. Many comments at all about anything favorable about the show. Now, I will say this. I'll tell you why. Most fans are conditioned to always find the bad on TNA. I get that. I understand that. But at the same time, you've got a red-hot WWE, and we'll talk about that later. And there's also pro football on tonight. Oh, that doesn't matter about the opinions of those who watched it. More watching football. They're DVRing wrestling. They'll watch. Listen. Most wrestling fans DVR TNA, and they'll watch it later so they can fast forward through all the new insurance commercials they got. Let's face it, most wrestling, they don't want to, because wrestling fans are so down on TNA, they want to be able to zip through and just see certain things. But that right there is the issue. That right there is the issue. And I, again, I challenge, give us a call, send us a tweet. Post on our Facebook. What did you like? If you're that TNA fan out there, what is keeping you a fan? 
Because I got to say, honestly, most people are expressing their frustration not with tonight's Impact Wrestling, but with TNA Wrestling overall. Whether it be Sting, whether it be Hogan, whether it be Bischoff, Jarrett, whoever it may be, there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of frustration about TNA Wrestling. And quite frankly, as even presented by a tweet we just got here via our Twitter account, PWR Show, Southern Siren saying uh, something I liked about TNA tonight was Austin Aries. That's really the only good comment we got about Impact tonight. Now, I am not, I've shared my opinion, which is, I've said this many a time before, at times, most of the time, TNA Wrestling, Impact Wrestling is a chore to watch. It is uninteresting, and it's just not fun. And I'm not at all intrigued by what is going to happen next, unlike WWE, where I am deeply intrigued as of late as to what is going to happen next. And isn't that their job? Isn't that the job of any wrestling company to keep you intrigued as to what's next so that you have a reason to tune in, so that you have an investment to tune in? Absolutely. That's what vignettes are for and, you know, backstage interviews and all that good, fun stuff. Promos and previews. Absolutely. I will say this. You know what? My, you know, the, the, my Twitter feed I was watching, a lot of fans were pretty hot at Jerry Lynn tonight for ruining that RVD uh, AJ Styles match. He did cost RVD again, and one have to, has to assume that we're going to see Jerry Lynn versus RVD coming up uh, in SBFG. October at Bound for Absolutely. Glory. And, and again, okay, well, Crimson Angle, that's going to be new. Mm-hmm. But is it going to be good? Crimson Angle? Yeah. Can Kurt Angle have a bad match? Can you name a bad Kurt Angle match? I don't think it's uh, possible. You know, I saw him in Rashi Brown about 15 years ago. Wow. <laughs> right. You know what? I don't, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm sure Crimson can hold his own, but is that going to be a match that fans are going to want to pay to see? I think so, because they've created a journey with, Chris, with Crimson from the Bound for Glory series. He's obviously climbed to the top of that series and has earned the spot now against the okay, champion at Bound for Glory. Knowing TNA, they'll probably screw Crimson two weeks before Bound for Glory, then he won't be undefeated going into Kurt Angle. He's got to be. Well, he should be, but, you know, who knows? Maybe Samoa Joe gets that role because he's just getting started. Oh, yeah. And uh, he feels that everyone in the TNA office is scared to fire him. He won't be fired, but he'll just continue to be buried so that's another story that's been getting built over the last and few is months. And is Samoa Joe going to sell tickets? Hmm. You look at that entire roster. You give me three matches that you would pay to see. Three matches that I would pay to see. Yes. Today. That would, I would sell more tickets than Hogan versus Sting. See, that's where we disagree, though, because Hogan Sting... I, I just I okay, I don't we're gonna we'll put a question Linda if you could do this put a question out on Facebook. Okay. Are you asking the wrong people? So because they're Facebook gonna say, is the IWC. Well, yeah, absolutely. I would say Hogan, but I mean, I'm just saying, I put up my posters and I do my radio and TV spots in Philadelphia, and I got to sell out this building. If I'm the promoter there, what is going to be my lead and what is going to be my headliner? Because they've chosen to make it Hogan versus Sting as the leader, the headliner. That's what it should be. I'm not knocking that. I'm simply saying that's not where we should be right now. Well, okay, it's not. But the fact of the matter is TNA can't afford to sell only 1,000 tickets in a building that holds 10,000 people. Okay? So they would rather get the casual wrestling fan that recognizes Hulk Hogan in Philadelphia, where Hogan has had a lot of great matches, in Philadelphia, where Sting has had a lot of great matches, in the hope that those two still have the magic for one more pay-per-view. They don't have the machine to build it. No, they don't. So they, they don't have, to, have the so they proper... have to go off past reputations. No, 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 even that. They don't they won't effectively build Hogan's thing. They don't have to build. They got to put them out there for the media to try to to build it for them. That's how TNA operates. They'll send a press packet to every radio and TV station in Philadelphia. And here's the fact of the matter is this, is that they're going to see Hulk Hogan. Oh, my God, Hulk Hogan. They put Crimson on there. They, they're going to think Crimson's a UFC fighter. Again, I'm not disagreeing with you on that fact. The challenge is 
I disagree that simply having Hogan versus Sting in the headlining main event at Bound for Glory will get them more pay-per-view buys or sell a substantially larger number of tickets. I think most wrestling fans nowadays are turned off by Hogan and Sting because they want, you know, that young breed that everyone keeps talking about that isn't there. Right. And like I said, Hogan and Sting will not close the show at Bound for Glory, but they'll be one of the final three matches. Can you rephrase that and say Hogan and Sting shouldn't close the show at Bound for Glory? No, they not probably at all. will. No, they will not close the show. There is no way. God forbid Hogan blows his back out in the main event of that pay-per-view and they got to go home early. That's pay-per-view suicide for them. They will not let another Jeff Hardy incident happen on their pay-per-view ever again. So they'll always have guys that can close the show, have they great matches. They should. It. You're exactly right that they should. I doubt that they will. Well, and I'll say one thing is that a lot of my friends that may have watched wrestling in, like, the Attitude Era and maybe stopped after that, if they hear a uh, Hogan versus Sting match, they're in. They saw it 14 years but, ago. But, They've seen it before. And they'll we'll watch it again. It now, yeah. Really? People oh, do on. like a train wreck. I just... I... Well, what, hold on. But these people that haven't watched in 14 years, they're not going to know it's going to be a train wreck. Mm -hmm. They're going to expect they to see. They have brains. They're going to know. No, the, come on. They hear all these other names, and it's to them, they'll just be like, oh, okay, whatever. No, again, Bye. this is getting twist turned upside down. I'm not knocking the okay, value Damien, and Damien. the impact that the match and the names in the match could possibly Every have. Every time you've seen Hulk Hogan on TV, he looks freaking fantastic. He looks to be in great shape. They hide the fact that he's had 26 million back surgeries in the last two years. Fantastic. Great shape. He doesn't? No. Oh, you're on something, man. Come on. The guy looks great for being 50-plus years old. But, okay, for being 50-plus like years old. Yes, exactly. Frank Gifford looks great for being 82 years old. He doesn't old. have 22-inch arms. We're going to take your phone calls on this subject when we come back. This here is the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and com. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com. We're live Thursday, August 18, 2011. Damian Nelson here along with Linda Kay and David Hero. Um, and tonight, the theme of themes are heavyweights. And our first one to kick us off sounds like Umenga. Umaga, yes. Thank you, Umenga. Daniel Yukovic, for choosing Umaga. <laughs> Love it. Let's see what other heavyweights are in store here tonight. And uh, we're talking about the heavyweight on Thursday nights, which is Impact Wrestling. What, Damien? From TNA. David. I have to apologize. For your delusional banter earlier? No. I, well, you know, I should probably tell you this off the air. I accidentally hit delete on this week's PWR camera. What are you talking about? The show we taped earlier that was supposed to air tonight. Well, we didn't tape a show. That wasn't that wasn't this week's. No. Oh, okay. we're off this week. Okay. That's how you well, wanted the, your little contract well, worked. Well, I deleted something. So it wasn't the dancing. No. Because no, we'll no. need that. Yeah. That, In October. That'll be fine. October. We're taking your phone calls on Impact Wrestling. We're going to dedicate a good portion of this show to Impact Wrestling, as it just went off the air a little while ago. And we ask you for your comments during Impact Wrestling. We'll read a few of those in just a moment and see what the population has to say. But you can call us once the lines are freed up, 414-276-ESPN, or all over the world at 1-800-990-ESPN. We've got callers from Louisiana and Hawaii on hold right now. We'll get to those in just a moment. Facebook, a couple of those comments from earlier about Impact. And, Linda, I think we did just put a, a question out there. Are you looking forward to a match between Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair at TNA Bound for Glory? That is the question, and we want to hear your votes, and we'll go ahead and provide you with the results of that poll later on here in this program. But a couple of your comments about Impact tonight, and I'm not being selective when I read these, um, but uh, we'll get uh, try to get a, a good sampling of uh, what you all had to say about Impact tonight. So a 
couple of comments here. Uh, hmm. Yep. Yeah. Chase and Carol saying, I think it's been pretty good so far. Reference impact. Alex Houchins saying, TNA feels like such a chore to get through these days. Even if I sit through a bad episode of WWE, at least I can watch the whole thing till the end. Les Stewart saying, I used to love Sting versus Flair, and, but in 2011, I don't know about that. Flavio Jimenez saying, going great so far. Austin Aries' win was great, and he's going to give the X Division some clash. class. Still have RVD versus AJ Styles to go and Tag Team Championship. Impact, so excited about Impact there. And uh, the comments continue. He's Joshua yeah, Erickson. Erickson. Yes, Joshua Erickson says, amazing. This is a chore watching TMA Impact. Sorry, TNA Impact. Please bring a better booking and writing. Hmm. And finally, Dustin Danette saying TNA would have a great program with Mr. Anderson as a heel, having a rivalry with Kurt Angle. So mixed comments, I will say. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what's amazing? Is the, if you really think about it, of all the changes TNA has made in the past couple of years, mm-hmm. how they've rebooted, they've changed the ring, changed the colors, you know, the ropes, the whole thing, heels and baby faces, baby faces and heels, they've still kept Vince Russo as their head of creative. But, you know, is it, is it or is it not true that Vince Russo gets a bum rap? Absolutely. Anything goes sure. bad, he's sure. the first person they blame. Mm-hmm. No, he does. But it, if you think about it, they've done everything else ex- except with the exception of removing Dutch Mantel. Mm-hmm. They haven't made any changes at all in creative. Do you think he has the key to the lockbox or the photos? or? Uh, I don't know. But I will say this. TNA did make a whole lot of... Um, Future Endeavors last week in their front office. A couple of them. And it's amazing. Some of the people that they let go that are ones that really work hard there, mm-hmm. they let them leave. Amazing. What did you do? Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> there was an incident with my, uh, no, my you're headset just, here. You're just distracted. Yeah, I'm really distracted here tonight. A couple of comments from Twitter reference impact. Gail Kim Groupie saying, I thought Austin Aries was good, the tag team title match, and Jeff Jarrett's announcing was good, but the rest of the show sucked. Aaron C. Fraley, TNA can build new stars every week, but without the, a star of today from WWE, it will never be competition to WWE. So... Those comments go. Let's. Uh, you know what? Go. They will never. The E will never have competition. They won't. They. They have their brand is so worldwide, so universal. Their it's stars like are larger than so life. Historic. It's like yeah, band aid. There's no way. Like it, Kleenex. It's like Kool Aid. It is the NFL. Carmex. There will never be another football league that will be bigger than the NFL, and that is how it will always be for the world wrestling entertainment. Not even the CFL. Not XFL? even. XFL. Uh, XFL was closed for about a week. Let's go to the phones and uh, take our first call from Louisiana. Will, you're live on line two. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Tremendous. Tremendous. All right, good. Uh, by the way, David, nice picture you put out on Twitter. Uh, what have you been doing over there, buddy? Hey, Not paying attention you know no, to no, the no, show. No, no. Here this I is, am carrying everybody this is again. Linda and Damien shenanigans, what they put on TV. No, this is uh, – <laughs> uh, stop. I'm distracted. We're watching softcore on – TV in here, just because it's what came on after Impact. Oh, okay. So there's no power button on the TV remote? Well, who would turn well, it off? Yeah. I mean, it's turned on right Come now. On. Jeez. So is Damien. Oh, wow. Y'all are hilarious, I swear. So, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, Impact tonight. Uh, well, it was Impact. Uh, <laughs> so, <I> mean, <laughs> See that right there. That right there, when is the last time anybody out there in the audience has been excited about anything they saw on Impact? I'm not saying comparatively speaking to CM Punk, comparatively speaking to anything WWE has done, but just when's the last time you've just been, oh, cool, Impact When they went head-to-head awesome. head with the Raw. Well, wait, can I answer that? Sure. sure. Okay, personally, the last time I was really invested in Impact TNA, whatever you want to call them any, anymore, uh, was actually when AJ Styles was the world champion before they did that whole thing where they ruined them with pairing up with Ric Flair. Mm-hmm. I was I was an AJ Mark, so I was interested in seeing a lot of the matches, like with Kurt Angle, 
uh, a little bit with the same matches. They redid the triple threat with Daniels and Samoa Joe. So I was really interested when uh, AJ was the world champion, but when he lost the title on TV, no less, to RVD, that just kind of ruined it for me personally. But yep. that's just my perspective. And you know what the funny thing is about that? That was Dixie's idea. She wanted to see who the fans wanted as champion. And when RVD won the fan online vote, that's who they went with, <laughs> RVD. Uh, well, that, that was a bad decision. That was a really bad decision, personally. But uh, I, I think I got one thing that I may be excited about. Okay. Eric Young versus Scott Bayo. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Actually, you know what? That's going to be funny. Uh, that's coming next week. Scott Bayo is going to be at Impact Wrestling in a park with Eric Young in Los Angeles. <laughs> Charles will be in charge on I Impact Wrestling next week. Charles is no longer in charge because he found a different place to show his talent. Huh. It's going to be interesting. I mean, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> is TMZ going to pick that up? Why does TNA go with the stars that nobody remembers? I mean, obviously like, because Jason Hervey is friends with Scott Bayo and they did that whole uh, Scott Bayo reality show on VH1 that was a Hervey Bischoff production. But why don't they reintroduce him as uh, most fans would know, would have no idea who Chachi really is? TNA loves Chachi? You know. That would be hilarious. That would be the one entertaining thing they could put on TV right now. You know, or they could say he, they, he used to be the Karate Kid. I mean, I'm sure they could confuse him with Ralph Macchio, but... Man, yeah. brutal. Yeah, Good for only, Eric Young, though. Yeah, no. The, the only bad thing about Impact right now is just they're inconsistent. They they go in one direction with Sting and Hogan, but everybody else just kind of is sitting around wondering what's going to happen for them. There's really no set storylines besides Hogan and Sting, to be honest. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for calling Will down in Louisiana. You know, I think I've got the answer. Oh boy. I think I've got the answer to TNA's woes, if there are any. And in this reporter's opinion, there are many. I'm going to talk about that when we come back. What a tease. That's what we do here. That's what we're watching as well. For <laughs> sake. This is yourself. the award-winning pro wrestling report here on 540 ESPN, com. They know their way around the wrestling ring, but certainly not a whole hell of a lot about being in it. This is the Pro Wrestling Report Radio. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN, ESPN ESPNMilwaukee.com. The Mastodon, Vader. It's time. It's heavyweights night here on PWR Radio. You pick the theme song tonight. You pick the themes on our Facebook page. And uh, who submitted that one, Linda Kay? It's Angel Figueroa, Vader. It's time. It's Vader. We also had a submission from our chat room on Blog Talk Radio, and uh, that was submitted by, it looks like, uh, PWR in a Box is uh, the username that submitted that. Is that infringement? Gimmick infringement. 414-276-ESPN, 414-276-3776, or all over the world at 1-800-990-ESPN, 1-800-990-3776. We're taking your calls about Impact Wrestling. Still to come here on the program, we're going to talk about this past Sunday's SummerSlam, an update on the PWR draft, our YouTube challenge, Discussion about Raw from this past Monday night, more of your calls, trivia, vintage video, and the tweet of the week. All that coming up here on PWR Radio. Let's go to our next caller who's calling us from Hawaii. Let's go to Scott on line three. You're live. Aloha to the PWR crew. How's everybody doing tonight? Tremendous. Aloha, Scott. All right. Hashmark tremendous. Now, I know later on you guys are going to talk about SummerSlam. So, I mean, I can always go back into the queue and wait to give the question because I don't want to ruin you guys' flow about TNA. I'm not sure there's a flow. Okay, oh, well, I don't want to ruin the I don't want to ruin the attempted flow. My bad. <laughs> In other words, you have nothing to say about Impact Wrestling. Unfortunately, Damon, that's the truth. They don't right. watch that in Hawaii. It airs there. What do you mean in Hawaii? Like that's some other country or far? Or, They're or... very particular about what they watch. <laughs> Scott, go Hashmark. ahead with your comment. 
Okay, I know I know it was about WWE, and like I said, I'm sorry about the flow, but we all got to see Alberto Del Rio become the champion at Ha-ha. SummerSlam. Yes. Yes, Dave, I knew you were going to say that. Point. Okay. Now, my question to the one and only PWR crew is, how long do you think Alberto's title reign will last? <laughs> SmackDown aired yet? <laughs> hey, you know what? As long as it ends on SmackDown or Raw, I don't care how long it goes for. Just don't lose on a pay-per-view. You know what? I think he might get a, a fairly decent run with it because he, Cena's going to be busy with Del Rio for a little bit, but then Punk will be busy with Triple H and Kevin Nash. Let let Del Rio have it for a while. He, he's the only guy that really needs it. Punk and Cena don't, don't they don't need it right now. Scott, thank you very much for that call out in Hawaii. Again, 414-276-ESPN or all over the world at 1-800-990-ESPN. I want to encourage you again to go over to our Facebook page where we're asking you if you are looking forward to seeing or do you want to see uh, Hogan versus Flair at TNA Brother. Bound for Glory. And that should actually be Hogan and Sting. So we'll get that uh, republished oh out there so that we can accurately deliver the results and not uh, – not uh, swirl it around with some voicemail tapping and all the other stuff of certain news networks. You're evil. Let's go to our next caller down in Houston, Texas. Ricardo, you're live. What up, dog? Hey. Rico. What's hey, up? Uh, you know when I cared about Sting versus Hogan? Uh, Starcade 1997. That's when I cared. I don't care anymore. It's like you guys said, it's gonna be a bomb. it's gonna be a tall bomb of a match. Uh, TNA as for tonight, I, I don't understand why Mexican America didn't win the belt at uh, what was their last pay per view? Hardcore Justice. Okay, you gotta understand. Yeah. Then I would have lost points. It's all done with you know. There is some reason behind the madness. Drop the belt Stop. on TV because no one's buying the pay per view. No one's gonna see it. So if you do it on TV where there's a bigger audience, it'll mean more. Well, I guess I suppose so. Yeah, you're right. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, one more question to David. Uh, Ooh. Well, all of you guys can answer it. But uh, uh, is it, is it, are the rumors true that they're bouncing checks down there in Florida? Um, um, I'm sure somebody is. But, uh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> Thank you for that, Carl Ricardo. The, what he's alluding to is uh, former WWE talent Jimmy Wang Yang went to Twitter and uh, said that uh, he had been paid by TNA Wrestling for his appearance uh, several weeks back, but the check bounced. And then said he was reached out to by someone in TNA and said he was being unprofessional. Wow. Couldn't have been that big of a check. Listen, Jimmy Wang Yang knows he's not coming back to TNA. So, I mean, so he burns that bridge. What's he going to do? You know, who knows? I mean... I haven't heard of anybody getting, you know, a, a check from the Bank of Spalding down there. But but it's all about trends. And this isn't the first time you've heard this particular situation as it regards to TNA wrestling. No. And that's unfortunate. 414 276 espn 414 276 we met our quota now for TNA, it's been 48 minutes. Oh, Jesus, that would have been a mess. It's now 48 minutes. We didn't talk about the new tag team champions, Mexican America. You know, we can talk about them uh, next week. No, it'll be old news by then. Well, Hell, they may have lost them by then. Oh, they could have. They may. And uh, also with Austin Aries being the number one contender to Brian Kendrick, uh, looks like he gets that X Division championship shot. And you got to venture to think that Austin Aries is going to soon be the X Division champion in Impact Wrestling. He has to be. You know what? It all depends on how long of a, of a, of a deal he signed. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many months did they give him when he won that contract? Three months? Twelve dates? A year? Six guaranteed dates? You know, I said before that last time out that I think I have the answer to TNA's challenges. Okay. Linda, are you sitting down? Are you ready for this? I'm this ready. This is revolutionary thinking, but it's what I do. They need to just stop. They need to, at the end of the year, between Christmas and New Year's, when nobody's watching either program anyways, take six weeks off. Just oh, stop. That will kill Just it. They don't have any momentum. Well, Just stop. Just stop. Take an off season. 
don't say you're changing everything. Don't say it's a big announcement, a big deal. Just stop. Any chance we had of getting a job at Creative, you just killed it right now. Just stop. When it's not on, then it's really forgotten. There's no way. Relaunch. Uh, okay, fine. Show best ofs for six weeks and then relaunch. You think they have six weeks worth? I hope so. That's really what I think they need to do. What is motivating you, David Hero, to tune in Impact Wrestling next week? Well, I want to see if my number one draft pick comes back. What is motivating you, Linda K, to tune in Impact Wrestling next week? I don't know. I want to see some more. I would like to see some more title changes, personally, but I don't know. If so you don't want to watch it either. Fish <laughs> was here when we got it when I got here tonight, and he asked the the question he asks every week: Is TNA out of business yet? Wow. Another host here at the station: Is TNA out of business yet? That's the question, Tillman. What's going to cause you? What are you looking forward to next week on Impact Wrestling? What are you looking forward to next week on Impact Wrestling? What is going to make you tune in behind he the glass? He wants to see Velvet Sky. Let him answer his own question. Don't I'm put thinking, words in his mouth. I'm thinking. He's got nothing. That's the problem. That's the challenge. I'm not hating on TNA. I've been a TNA loyalist. Well, yeah, because you get catering. For very, no, not since you ruined that, too. Wow. I've been shut out. I'm just saying six weeks. Take it off. Bro, Amigo, we're going to be at Bound for Glory. Mm -hmm. You better change your tune or they won't let us in the building. I am not going to change my tune to satisfy anyone. I'm sharing my opinion as a wrestling fan. I'm being real, honest, upfront, direct, sincere. Oh, that's not going to get you anywhere. You got to kiss up once in a while. We're going to take a time out. Actually, we're not going to take a timeout. Screw it. Wow, you are. We're going to go all the way up to Sports Center. You've turned a whole new leaf, haven't you? Overall impact tonight, David Hero. Passing or failing? I'll be honest. I didn't watch the whole show. I had Great. A then why draft. are you sitting in here? Well, it's part of my contract. I have yeah, part of, of your contract is to watch the show you're going to talk about. I too. did. Hey, I saw the last hour. I read the spoilers. I saw Ken wasn't going to be on, so I'll be honest. You know what? Why was I going to – well, you know, beer money was there, but they, they dropped the belts. You know, it's nice. It's always nice to see Karen Angle on TV. Or oh, Karen, hell Karen no. Garrett. That was my favorite part. You know? She ran down and uh, cost beer money the tag team champion. You know, what I, you know what I did not like about TNA tonight? What did you not wrestling? like? Crimson. What's wrong Here's with him? a guy with a busted knee. If Brace have, outside the if jeans. If I have a busted knee, why am I going to walk down the ramp and get into the ring with a busted knee? Because you're brave, you're I'm, tough, no, you're not afraid I'm of anyone. I'm going to cut my promo in a back room with the doors locked sitting down so I don't re-injure myself going into a big match with Kurt Angle. Right? Right. At least Sting goes out there with a baseball bat. I mean, you know what? Show a little bit of vulnerability. Show that these guys have a brain, that they're just not all big, jacked-up, you know, muscular guys. Have them outthink the heel once in a while. When was the last time a baby face truly out thunk a heel? The Miz. He's not a baby face. Oh, he's almost there. He looks like a baby face, but he's not a baby face. Meow. Mm -hmm. I'll be Whatever. damned. This is freaking <laughs> crazy. <laughs> you guys. And the best thing is Linda loves this show. You know, uh, next week, right here on this very program, Amazing Red is going to join us. Next Monday night when we return here to 540 ESPN. He's part of the X Division, gone from TNA Wrestling. Let's see what he has to say. That's Crimson's mini-me, right? He's a former multi-time X Division but champion. Weren't they brothers? When they, when he, when At a brothers? point. Yeah. What happened? Well, he got let go, didn't Why wouldn't his brother Crimson, look out for him? Or Red. So he I will be you. joining us for the first time right here on this program next Monday night right after WWE Raw. Wait, 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 wait. So we're, we're, we're back on Mondays now? Next week. And beyond. This Monday. Oh, thank God. My whole week got screwed up. I was down here Monday, and they wouldn't let me in. I forgot that we were on Thursday nights. Let's go to Dustin in Louisiana. Dollars for parking. I wasn't pleased about that. You're live, Dustin. Hey, how are you all doing today? Tremendous. Amazing. My question is, for TNA, after Bound for Glory, 
what's next for TNA? I mean, where do they go from there? In my opinion, six weeks off. Oh, shut up, man. That's not going to happen. I'm not saying it will, but bound for they glory need a reset. Their reset. Yep. So they're not going to take I six mean, weeks off. I mean, they keep a heel for one week, and they turn, it, they turn the heel into a face and vice versa. Because they realize Ken Anderson sells far more merchandise, far more T-shirts, more hats, action figures, and posters as a baby face than he does a heel with Immortal. They learned their lesson. I agree. I think Mr. Anderson should should have been a heel and not turned to a face. Well, I agree. Ken Anderson was not. If Ken Anderson was going to stay in Immortal, he should have been the leader of Immortal. He shouldn't be taking orders from Bubba Ray Dudley. That's where they screwed the whole thing up. Right. Thank. He's, he's one of the top guys. Well, I, I don't. Yeah, that is the great question. I say reset. Okay, so Sting and Hogan, or Sting and Hogan, okay, they're going to wrestle a match at Bound for Glory. That's what everything's being built around. You're exactly right. What happens next? Are they going to have a rematch? Right, it's going to be no. tried out. It's, listen, loser's going to retire or something like that. Loser gets control of the company. Oh, yeah, because we haven't seen that 13 times in the last 14 months. How about Rick Blair and his comment it. tonight? He has to retire, not some phony retirement. Rick Flair said that? <laughs> he is delusional. <laughs> and that's what makes him great. Dustin from Louisiana, thank you so much for that phone call. A couple of more comments on Twitter, and uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Twitter.com slash PWR show. Ah, Saul Perez Jr. saying, if I, if I knew Hogan versus Sting was Hulk's absolute last match he'll wrestle ever, then I'd watch. See? If not, eh. That's the hook right there. But, but it, you it, know what? Hogan's going to have his last match working for Vince. Is any wrestling fan going to believe Absolute, anybody's going to have their last absolutely. match? Absolutely. Okay. Is any ah. wrestling fan going to believe Hulk Hogan saying he's going to have his last yes. match? He sat on Jay Leno and said he was running for president, for God's sake. That's fine, and he did. Okay, he's, I, right, he's running as much as I'm running. For president. That's how much he ran for president. There's no credibility there. Hulk Hogan comes out and says, I'm retiring, hey, brother. This is my last match, brother. How about Linda Hogan? What is she doing now? She's got a bloody tongue. She said that Hulk's in the bar. Ah, you repeat it, you make it real. I said she said. I didn't say that she proved it. I'm not sure we'd want her to prove it. I don't want to know. There's, none of my, there's nothing Keep wrong with that. Keep in the back for that one. No pun intended. Hulk Hogan, if he were to come out and say, this is going to be my last match, I'm never wrestling again, which might be true, I'm not, and I'm not knocking him, but the fans have no reason at all to okay. believe that to be true. Amigo, let me just say this. Aha. And this is no knock on TNA, okay? I don't mean to bury them or, or whatever, but I don't think there's any one wrestler in that company that honestly believes they want to have their last match in TNA. If anything, they want to have their last match wrestling for the biggest company in the world. Right? I agree. There's but, no doubt but about even it. so, it's still hard to believe that you know we have these recent retirements at WrestleMania, and then a few months later we see them on TNA. So what can we believe? That's where uh, Melina's going to pop up. She'll be in TNA. They all yeah. go there for a little while for the... <laughs> The right? grass is greener on the other side until you have to mow it. Yeah. Well, then water your own grass. But I'm you can saying, hire people to do that. Yes, you Jeff can. Jeff Jarrett knows a few people. He does. Jose and Hobi. Or Hosby. I don't know. Something like that. Right? Let's Who go to, to the phones again. In TNA. Let's go to the phones again. Let's go down to Alabama. Quentin, you're live. Thing might. That's yeah. about it. Hello? Hello, Quentin. How you doing? Great. I have, I have a question to ask you. Why don't TNA just blow up the whole division and just make tag teams like they used to be to make it better? Just have everybody individual tag teams instead of having a mortal. Well, they, thank you very much for that call, Quentin. I think that uh, TNA still has a very strong tag team division, especially comparatively speaking to WWE. But when we talk about Raw, we're also going to talk about their renewed focus, it seems, on tag teams. Back again. Oh, they had a tag team tryout this past week, too. That, yes. Um, but um, 
it's it's more than splitting up immortal. It's it's more than this or that. It's just there needs to be fundamental change. You know what hurts immortal in that company? You know what truly hurts immortal? What does? They don't have the stud. The AJ no. Styles? He's not in immortal. And no, he wouldn't. He, Bully Ray? he could be. He no. You need one guy in Immortal that can headline a pay-per-view. Come on, Gunner. Gunner's a he's. Oh. Gunner's not a bad hand. He's not. He's actually, not at all. No, but he's not there yet. They need the one stud that says, "Wow, this is besides Hogan and Bischoff, this is the true leader of Immortal." And they had that with Jeff Hardy. Who? You know the guy with the situation. Evercrombie. Yeah. That's where they screwed up. They needed that. Kurt Angle would have been a great leader for Immortal. Someone that has been there. That is, you know, that is an Immortal. Are you saying guy. they need me? No. No, because your gig on SmackDown has been going too well for you. I'm on Raw, too, sometimes. Sometimes. Occasionally. <sighs> Come on. You know, it's an hour and one minute. This is, we've, we've done the TNA hour. Oh, from the man who sits here every week. Oh, we got to talk about TNA. Are we going to talk about TNA? We got to talk about TNA. We want to talk about TNA. Let's talk about TNA. You want to talk about TNA? You want to talk about TNA? On Sunday night, and you don't even want the to talk about it. The biggest thing in wrestling. Alberto Del Rio is oh, our for the love new of... WWE. Did you see that mouse run out of his trunks? Doesn't matter. Who cares? And why he's, he's why unclean. Why is his mouse in the first place? He's unwashed. Wow. That is some anti Semitism right there. No, it's. I'm an anti-dentite. Okay. Linda understands that. Alberto Del Rio brought the gold home to the Super Friends. 414-276-ESPN. Kevin 414-276-ESPN. 800-990-ESPN. for the Super Friends. We're going to be talking about WWE SummerSlam, the Raw that followed. We have trivia, the phone zone, and uh, an update on the PWR draft, along with Tweet of the Week, Vintage Video, and more. Coming up on the Pro Wrestling Report. Uh, Linda, right now on Facebook, we've got that uh, modified poll out there. And the question, are you looking forward to Sting versus Hogan at TNA Bound for Glory? How about we go to the tote and see where the votes stand right now? It looks like it's like a 50-50 split right now. There's no way. That is what? You been drinking? No. Not now. 50-50. From what, no, from the number of votes that we have right now, that's the 50-50. Half the people listening to this show right now want to see Sting versus, Sting versus Hogan. No, more people don't want to, but... Then how's that? Okay, then it's not 50-50. Are you using math from the Red no, Channel? At... The Red Channel. Okay, there are 33 votes for no and 16 for yes. How is that 50-50? Well, I, I'm looking at the grid and, like, the graph. Does that, that not, does that not look like it's 50-50? <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's just, well, it Are we looking at the it same It depends thing? on which way you tilt your head. <laughs> oh, my God. I expect the number of votes to be collected. <laughs> uh. Overwhelmingly, people don't want to see it. We'll go back to that at the end of the program as well. They don't know what they want to see. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com. Amen. Back to the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com. David, stop that. He's trying to dance like Sapphire over there. Where'd you get that first quote from? I'm not dancing like Sapphire. I'm dancing like the Dweem, baby, as you will. It's all the same. You know what was great what? about that? When um, Jesse Ventura was on commentary and anytime Sapphire would come out, he would just speak in such utter disgust about her. Yeah, well, there's a lot of rumors behind the whole Sapphire whoa. story. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Oh, I, yeah, I don't want to go all Linda Hogan right now. So Whoa. I better not. Whoa. Brother. Thank you, Christopher Amaro, for choosing the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Dween. Dween. The Dween. You know, I don't think of heavyweights when I think of Dusty Rhodes. He's a big guy. Yeah, but, I mean, well, you know, heavyweights, is like one-man gang. Bundy, OMG. John Studd, Andre, Bam Bam Bigelow. Um, Akeem. It's Akeem. Hakeem. No, it's Akeem. The African Dween. 
Big Boss Man, Earthquake, Typhoon. I don't think Dusty. Whoa. John. Bastion Booger. Yeah, Bastion Booger. Great one. Oh, I hope that's not a theme song popping up next. It's disgusting. Next. We've uh, been talking about Impact Wrestling, and we want to thank you for your conversation pertaining to that. I would like to make this closing statement as it pertains to TNA Wrestling. Well, I don't know what to say. All right, let's go back to the phones, and let's go to David in Michigan on line one. David, you're live here on the Pro Wrestling Report. How's it going? It's a great night here in MKE. That's good. Um, I actually kind of enjoyed bits and parts of Impact tonight. I mean, it was horrible. Like, last week I thought was worse than this week. Obviously it was. But I enjoyed the gauntlet match, too. I mean, some of these guys I haven't heard of. And they were pretty amazing in that exhibition match. There's no doubt about it. And, again, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying Impact was horrible tonight, last week, any other night. I'm simply saying. What are you saying, Damien? It's difficult to put into words. Are you having a moment? No, not at all. It's just uh, that there's no – I'm not invested. There it is. I'm not invested. And why? Who would get you invested? I don't know. That's not my job to figure out. Yes, it is. If you're investing, you should know who you want to invest in. Who is the one guy that – you know what? I can't do another. I can't do another hour. ADR is the new WWE champion. That's where we got to go. Kevin Nash is back on Raw. And I got blasted for my Kevin Nash comments on the post show, on the Raw post show well, on Monday you, night. You hold a different opinion than a lot of people out there on Kevin Nash. I hold the right opinion. I'm knowledgeable about what I'm talking about. I got the backstage scoop. I know what's going on here. You don't have any scoops. You got a scoop of ice cream and catering. That was about it. Oh. Rocky Road. Speaking of catering, we enjoyed Ring of Honor's catering this past Saturday in Chicago Ridge. That was Saturday, wasn't it? It was this past Saturday. Talked to some great people down there and saw a great show, some great wrestling for their debut on Sinclair Broadcasting Stations all over the country on September 24th. And uh, it was it was fun. It really was. It was a different atmosphere. It was wrestling. It was almost old school. It's almost it was like being an armory. Exactly. Well, well, wait, we are. We were, weren't we? It was a – stop that. It looked great. It I, looked great. I'm curious to see how it's going to look on TV. I've seen some footage. Okay. Looks dang good. How would you get the footage so quick? I'm telling who you know, bro. Well, I, I did see you and Cornette hanging out for a little while. Let's go to Dan in Dallas, Texas. You're live here on the Pro Wrestling Report. All right, thanks, Dan, for taking my call. Well, since y'all have been talking about TNA forever, might as well talk about some about um, a little bit about ROH. You know, one of the things that I am looking forward to watching uh, this come September. September 24th. Yeah, it's, it's ROH. You know, finally get to watch some pro, actual pro wrestling on my TV. Well, it's actually here in Dallas. I don't have it. I got to watch it online. But I'm truly hoping that this product, you know, Builds up some some interest because it's something I really enjoy watching. Not like uh, you know something I watch on Monday or Friday. You now hopefully uh, they get some steam going for them, and uh, hopefully bigger and better things soon. All right. Yeah, and, and this is thank you very much for that call, Dan. This is the single biggest thing that ever happened to Ring of Honor Wrestling, because while they were on HD Net, you needed to have not only cable or satellite, but you needed to have the HD version of it, which is you know got heavy penetration, but not everywhere. And now. They're in most major markets across the country on broadcast television. Unfortunately, not in Chicago or New York, but you'll be able to watch online, ROHWrestling.com. And I guess there was some controversy and confusion about whether or not that would be a paid service, and uh, you will be, indeed be able to access it at no charge. Hey, according to no spoilers. That wasn't for the TV audience. Are you that sure? Was, I'm I certain. thought it was for the TV audience. Well, they've been cleaning up that message for a while. Okay. Thank you very much for that call, Dan, down in Dallas, and uh, it's going to be interesting come September 24th uh, with Ring of Honor. 9-24. 11. One, one. Hmm. You know, I, I'm happy for the guys in TNA. I think that... You know, Ring of Honor? Yeah, Ring of Honor. You just can't get TNA off the brain, can you? <laughs> well, look what's on TV. It's just, you know, I'm happy for Ring of Honor because, you know what, there's a lot of good young talent down there. And they, they really did put on some great matches. I mean, they got a good four weeks' worth of TV tapings, 
and every week they had that one good match that's like, wow, very impressed. You know, people are talking so much about how much they want wrestling and how much people want, you know, old school wrestling back. Do you think they really do, David, here? Not at all, because they don't know what old school wrestling really is. But when they say we want, you know, that the, the, the we want to go back to the days of wrestling, it's really, is that code for the Attitude Era? Might be. Is that what wrestling, old school wrestling is to most of today's fans? It could be, because there was some great wrestling there. But when I, when, when people say old school I'm thinking like the 60s, 70s, and early 80s. You know, Vern Gagne, Lou Fez, Bob Backlund, Pedro Morales, Bruno San Martino. That's, to me, that's old school wrestling. I don't know if the fans today would want to, what would, would pay to see a one hour Broadway match with Bob Backlund and superstar Billy Graham. You know what I mean? That's old school. I mean, the Crusher versus the uh, Mad Dog Vashon, that's old school. Yeah. But, but to some people, old school would be Hogan, Macho Man. You know, snooker and, and, and everything. They can see old people, school at Bound for Glory. Yeah, I mean, if you, to, some, to some people, old school in quotations would be the Attitude Era with the Rock. And or for Stone some, Cold. it's ECW. Or, okay, yeah. ECW. True. Yeah. So you know, I think that's a pretty broad brush. Yeah, to say they want old school because what do you really consider old school? different for everybody. Absolutely. It's like for you, the oldies are 40s music. For Linda and I, it's 90s music or yeah. oldies. Yeah, like you like Wham, and I like Big Band, so. <clears throat> Wake me up before you go-go. How often does that happen? How often does what happen? Wake me up before you go-go? Yeah. WWE SummerSlam was this past Sunday night on pay-per-view. A brand new world heavyweight champion in Randy Orton. And uh, not one, but two undisputed WWE champions walk out of SummerSlam, the first being CM Punk, who defeated John Cena in controversial fashion. Of course. You think Cena could have just done the the job? Right, but couldn't Cena just put him over? It ultimately amounted to nothing, though. So I wonder why they did that. It did, because Cena can say, I never really lost. Triple H screwed up. Fans didn't. Listen, the little Jimmys know in their heart of hearts. Big Jimmy was at SummerSlam. That... Cena really didn't lose because he got cheated. They're talking on pant legs saying he didn't really lose. Or their jean shorts, one of the two. Alberto Del Rio did indeed cash in money in the bank to become the new WWE Undisputed Champion with the help of a returning Kevin Nash. What are you doing? Why are all these noises coming from over there? We're live on the radio. I'm sorry. I was fixing the stuff you broke during the break. Kevin Nash back in World Wrestling Entertainment. And David Hero, I'm still not sure it's been explained even after Kevin Nash spoke on Raw this past Monday night and said that he received a text from his friend. Yes. He implied heavily it was Hunter Hearst Helmsley, but did not come right out and say it. So he can't. Listen, I shot Nash the text on Friday. I said, listen, we need ADR to win to bring some gold back home. He was down by the Juggalos doing his thing, hopped on the plane, Took care of business. See, that's that's what a, a, a true super friend is. If you think anybody out there listening to this show is going to believe for one red moment that you were the reason that Kevin Nash got into the building and involved himself in that matchup, then, my friend, you have some delusional qualities to you right now. What if you were to come on and say that's what it really was? How would that make you feel? It's not... Stop. He might tweet that later tonight. Okay, sure, great. He might tweet that later tonight. Absolutely great. But everybody and with a know brain knows that didn't happen. All the websites are going to pick that up and report it as news. You know what? Why can't I just have that moment? Why just? Why can't I just feel that's what truly happened? I will say this: nobody knew Nash was going to be there, which is the greatest thing about it. I mean, and was, nobody would have ever thought that that chapter would unfold at SummerSlam. Listen. Even the guys that were with Nash Friday night at the Juggalos con- uh, show, The Gathering. JC Dub? Was that the they- iPay-per-view? Yes, that happened four hours late. None of them knew. He didn't tell anybody. You know? They said all of a sudden, they said that he, that he had a concussion and that his neck hurt. So everyone was like, oh, well, okay, maybe that's what it is. Not once did anybody think. No, and the funny thing is, is that I read online that some people said how Nash was hanging out at the hotel the whole time. No, he wasn't. <laughs> Do you know where he was? He where was, was he? in the hotel. He was in Triple H's bus for the whole day. Yep. 
So it's like, come on, you know? And here's what's great about it, too. Some video surfaced of the uh, after that, after Kevin Nash had involved himself in SummerSlam, and he literally walked out the door of the arena. Yeah, to Triple H's bus. Exactly. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, it, this has certainly built some intrigue, but as you said, David Hero, it has spurred some questions from some fans about his involvement and is Triple H going back to the well, if you will, of his friends and the click? And I'm not sure there's a problem with that, but at the same time, it has created yet another layer of okay. a very dynamic story between John Cena, Triple H, CM Punk, Kevin Nash now, and Alberto Del Rio. All these different branches are growing off the CM Punk tree. Bro, Cephas, answer me this, okay? Of all the guys on the Raw and SmackDown roster, who could they have brought in? The Miz. That could have screwed CM Punk. Cody Rhodes. That would have, like, surprised the world. Heath Slater. See? Stop it. You're being... Chris Jericho. You're being... You know what? Jericho could have. Yeah. But there's no connection with H right. and Jericho. Right. So they brought It would have been a one-off. They brought in Triple H's good buddy. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Some people listen. Some people say, "Oh, you know, you're a Nash apologist. You're a Nash supporter." You know what? The fact of the matter is this: if he didn't mean anything, he wouldn't have been there. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Kevin Nash still means something. He's going to be in the new Raw versus SmackDown 2012 game, so why not put him out there in front of the audience? You know, and what great reaction did he get at the Royal Rumble? It may have been for three minutes, but he got a great reaction. It was a bit muted, and to be it, honest. It, well, Maybe on the, on the TV you were watching. But the fact is, is that, you know what? If Kevin Nash can come in and help get CM Punk over more, then then he's doing the right thing. Nash is not afraid to put somebody over. He put Ray Mysterio over in the middle of the ring. Before or after he threw him into the trailer on Nitro? After. And that was the night after Mysterio lost his mask in a match against Nash. <gasps> he lost his mask? Yeah. That happened? Yeah. Like on national TV, on a wrestling program? On a pay-per-view. Wow. How about that? Well, respect the mask. And, you know, I read that on the back of his shirt. And the thing is, is like, you know, when you saw the promo between Nash and Punk, how it was a little bit awkward in the beginning? Yeah. They weren't given a script. Okay? So they went out there, two guys with two live mics, two pipe bombs, as CM Punk would say, and they went at it. You know what? I'm sure Nash wasn't wasn't certain which way Punk was going to go with it. But you could honestly tell that he got under Nash's skin a little bit when he you know called him old and made fun of him, and then Nash you know fired back with the guaranteed contract thing. So it's going to be interesting in the next couple of weeks to see how this whole thing pans out. But uh, you know what? I, I'm happy that you know they brought him back. I think that you know it's going to be in a small dose. He's not going to be back full time. But if he can if he can get if he can do something to make CM Punk a bigger star than what he already is. Well, then it's a win-win for everybody. Stephanie McMahon's also involved in this whole situation. The billion-dollar princess showed up on SummerSlam and this past Monday's Raw. Again, this dynamic keeps growing. The intrigue keeps growing. You want to know who's in bed with who as it pertains to this situation. Well, come on. Let's not make this in a TMZ. We all know that Triple H is sleeping with Stephanie. they got three kids. How do you know they don't have separate beds? Some marriages are like that. You know what? I don't know. You're absolutely right. Amazing. See what you take the show. See what you do. No, I'm just throwing out. I'm throwing out just options, choices. All right. We're taking your calls as well. The number four one four two seven six ESPN and one eight hundred nine ninety. ESPN one eight hundred nine ninety three seven seven six. We have a caller in Moreno Valley, New Jersey, and in Houston, waiting on hold. We'll get to those calls in a minute. We're going to take a timeout, and when we come back, more discussion about SummerSlam Raw. We've got an update on the PWR draft, answer to our YouTube challenge from last week, this week's trivia question, vintage video, Sweet of the Week, and more. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Follow us on Twitter for breaking news, live wrestling chat, and pure hilarity. Head over to twitter.com slash show and be part of the conversation. ESPN. 540 ESPN. ESPN. 
Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com. We're live on Thursday, August 18, 2011. Damian Nelson here along with Linda Kay and David Hero. And uh, you picked the themes. The theme of themes tonight are heavyweights. Wow, this song has me bobbing my head. Like, yeah? All right, thank you, Chris Barclay, for choosing Earthquake theme on our special heavyweight theme night. What is all over that paper? That's not a napkin. <laughs> the respect around here is just amazing. Bro, I, look I'm, at what's on the TV. You I, ruined I, your run sheet, Linda. I know, right? What the hell, kidding. Linda K? We're talking about WWE you know, SummerSlam and the Raw that followed this past Monday night. She gets the whole month in the calendar to herself that she takes over everything. It's Octiobre. Is that how you say it? Octubre. Octiobre. Octiobre. No. Noviembre. Octubre. Ocho? No, Diez. Nieve. John Cena this past Monday night on Raw. I gotta tell you, I liked it. What something was different. I like that more. But something was different. John Cena had an edge to him, and we talked about on this program a couple of weeks ago. He had believability to what he was saying this past Monday night. There seemed to be a new fire under John Cena. Yeah, he needs to get rocking because that's who's next on his, you know, up from his the rock. His he's dance got, card. He's got to get a little bit more of a little some edge, a little flavor, a little substance, a little sassiness because the rock has been owning John Cena for the past almost what six, seven months. Mm-hmm. But really, was good. I mean, come on. I it was good. I mean, it was different. It was good. It was new. It was fresh. That's what a lot of people have been asking for. I was satisfied by it. Not satisfied. Satisfied. Okay. Well, hey, you know what? As long as you're happy, that's what matters on this show. Host of the year. Hottie. It's the time for our PW... <laughs> Sorry. Put the... Uh, come on, Linda. Really? I was sleeping. It's time for our PWR draft update. Right, Damian Nelson? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry, we started talking about John Cena, and I got a little, you know... That's our, oh, oh, yeah. That's oh, our yeah. resident Cena Everything Cena's he fan. said has been believable to me, so just... What? Linda, we're going to have to have another conversation. You just said that in front of a worldwide audience. But I also, Everything he said has been believable to you? I also fall into either the children of the fans or the women of the fans. Wait a minute. Am I, am I wrong? Uh, I think you fall into the women. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm getting moist. Oh, my goodness. Okay, time to talk about our draft update, gentlemen. All right. From <laughs> SummerSlam, we've got the SummerSlam update. Nelson family scores 110 points. Mm-hmm. And Super Friends scores 180. Oh, that's How about rocking. That? All right, so this space- That's what happens when you can pick a person to replace 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 a person. I just called Nash, and he, you know, did a salad for me. Hand delivered a new WWE World Champion. All right. You know, he's going to show up on Raw one of these nights wearing a Super Friends T-shirt. And how is that going to make you feel? I'll be just fine because this is not going to happen. All right. Kevin Ash, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right. After SummerSlam, this brings our current total to Super Friends with 1,255 points and the Nelson family at 1,105 points, bringing a point difference of only 150. We'll close that gap up at Night of Champions. No worries there at all. Thank you very much, Linda, for that update on the draft. Oh, We're going to go. Quarter. We're going to go to the – that's a unique way to measure sound uh, on the TV right now. We're going to go to uh, the, our phones, and I believe we've got uh, James in Houston on line three. You're live. Hey, how is uh, the PWR crew in Milwaukee doing tonight? I am tremendous. James, it's been a that's great amazing. night. Okay, okay. Um, it's kind of a loaded question, so I wanted to ask it, and then you guys can take it off the air. Um, Damien, there was a comment that you made back um the episode that – um, the Rock came back. You said that um, when The Rock came back, um, Stone Cold came back, and um, Tough Enough was getting ready to happen. And you were saying with all those pieces that were happening, you were to believe that it was to be the rebirth of WWE at the time. Mm-hmm. Now, now, I'm not going to ask if you agree or disagree with that comment, but what I will ask from all of you guys if you guys could grade WWE on an overall entertainment scale since WrestleMania, what would it be and why? It's a great question, James. Thank you very much for that call. If we can grade WWE on an overall entertainment scale, what would it be and why? Dave, we'll, we'll start with you. A to F, 
for WWE overall right now since Mania. Overall right now since Mania? Well, overall since Mania. Okay, first of all, here's how I have to look at that. I can't look at it like it's how I would grade it. you got to look at how who it's being written for. And obviously there's a lot of kids that it's written for, you know, a certain age age group. And, you know, Cal watches it with his friends, and they love it. They love everything about it. So I guess if you look at it that way, it's an A because who they're targeting is completely into the show, and, and, and they love it, and they're buying into it, and they're doing a great job. The show is not written for you and I, Damien. You know what I'm saying? Because for us, the the believability is not there. So for us, I'd probably give like a C plus. But overall, for the demographic, you know, for the women and children like Linda, yeah, it's easily an A. I'd say a B, only because, I mean, we have that big buildup at the end of WrestleMania in Atlanta. You know, we know that Cena and The Rock would be the big, big main event. But I don't know. I mean, we've had a lot of good things, obviously, with CM Punk, you know, going going on the last few weeks. But there's still some things lacking, I think. I want to see some more storylines going on. I want to see something strong, you know, building up to the next big pay-per-view at Survivor Series. I don't know. That's the next big one, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's been all right. I mean, they've definitely kept me hanging on. I mean, I'm a big WWE fan regardless. Here's, here's, regardless of David Hero ruining the Miz's career, the WWE overall would get no higher than a B-plus from me as a fan because – it's since WrestleMania, and let's remember this high level of excitement didn't kick in until July. So, if you well, look at the full curve, let's say end of June, we'll go with that. June thirtieth, we'll go with that. Um, so, you know, it's it's not it's not knocking them at all for anything. And, and again, it was just like Tyson in '98 when Mike Tyson was a part of WrestleMania 14. A lot of people wondered why, but they got an icon in pop culture be a part of WWE, and later that year, a couple months after Mania, they started beating Nitro on the ratings. It worked. And maybe The Rock, maybe Steve Austin, maybe they were the catalyst for this renewed interest in WWE, but let's not fool ourselves. WWE is maintaining the audience they had last year. Raw did decent in the ratings this past week. SmackDown's doing okay in the ratings. Their live event business is doing good. They made a million bucks plus on summer, made millions of dollars rather on SummerSlam, uh, just with the live attendance there, and they're selling a lot of merchandise. Those are all good indicators. But WWE has not seen a substantial rise in their overall business since WrestleMania, even though they've had some spikes, if you will. You know, it's going to be interesting. It takes time. It will take time for all that too. Come on, the back end. Here's what's going to be interesting with now all the new fanfare and hoopla for CM Punk. Hoopla. This could be bad for The Rock. Mm. You know, because the fans are now solidly behind CM Punk. If he starts making fun of The Rock, right. that's not going to bode very well for him. Fans may turn against him because they believe in their new messiah, the punker. Let's go to Mike in Marino Valley. You're live. Hello, Mike. Too long. It's been too long. Well, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Nelson, I hear you busting Mr. Hero's chops about being the quote-unquote backyard Hall of Famer. I think you feel left out, my friend, so we're going to induct you, too. Oh, that just made it uh, okay. Don't, don't, don't worry. You're a top ballot Hall of Famer, Mr. Hero. Top okay. Ballot. Thank you. Much better. A um, couple things. Kevin Nash coming back. Awesome. It's nice to see him in the ring again. But Alberto Del Rio being the champion, once again, this is awesome. But is it going to be a slow burn to have him fizzle out like the Miz did? No offense, Mr. Nelson. But, I mean, they're, they're pushing him to the moon. It's obvious he's in transition as a champion. Where do they go with Alberto Del Rio after this? Well, I think Del Rio is a Thank far more call, entertaining champion than the Miz, first of all. It's a matter of personal opinion. Oh, come on. Does the Miz come out in a fancy car? No. So a car makes a star. Absolutely. So rhythm and blues were great. They're on par with ADR. They were close. I don't say they're on par. I mean, they have... But the car makes a star. Oh, absolutely. Look at Mick Foley. He drove a Pinto. Wider than longer. Yeah. Well, some people like that. But, you know, it's just like ADR, I think, has... He can go. 
I just think he's a different character. He's more of he's a wrestling heel, not a heel wrestler. But he looks just like a frat boy, like you say no, about he everybody does else. Not there. Stand him up next to Triple H, Undertaker, Kevin Nash. He looks he like a stands out pompous like a... millionaire. True. Hmm. The Very Miz true. looks like the frat boy. Cody Rhodes and looks ADR like a frat boy. and the Miz next to each other. Can't put Cody Rhodes in that because there's no comparison. Stand them next to each other. You're looking at essentially no, the same size and stature of people. No, one looks like a grown man and one looks like a boy. One is six five. The other one is he's not six five. Del Rio is six five. He is. You're believing stats from WWE.com? No. Big Show still eight hundred pounds, right? No, the, Del Rio and I, you know, we had a beverage together. I'm six five. We saw eye to eye. Thank you for that call, Mike, out in Moreno Valley. Why do you always got to bury the guys I like? I'm not burying anybody. I just don't see your man love for ADR. I didn't say I love him. I appreciate his talents. He's rich, he's powerful, and handsome. The Miz can't say that. Oh, yes, he can. He never has. Excuse me, I'm going to make a phone call. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Well, again, thank you for that call, Mike. (laughs) It's... uh, we're going to take another time out, and uh, when we come back, we're going to uh, go to trivia. I have a little vintage video and uh, the YouTube challenge and more of your phone calls at uh, 414-276-ESPN or all over the world at 1-800-990-ESPN. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and com. Subscribe to the Pro Wrestling Report on YouTube. We promise we'll never rickroll you, but we might just choke slam you. Click the subscribe button now and be part of the revolution. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com. We're live on Thursday, August 18, 2011. Damian Nelson along with David Hero and the lovely Linda Kay. We're taking your phone calls, talking about professional wrestling, the number 414-276-ESPN. We're all over the world, 1-800-990-ESPN. And just in case you didn't know, you could also check out the Pro Wrestling Report episodes on YouTube. Join the over 6 million people who have checked out the Pro Wrestling Report on YouTube. And then answer our YouTube challenge. Great. Last week, our YouTube challenge question was, who will win and become the undisputed WWE champion at SummerSlam? Our winner is Brandon Donner saying CM Punk will become the undisputed WWE champion because Triple H will sue John Cena just so Triple H can get his shot at CM Punk for the title. Oh, he was wrong. Punk's not the title. Nobody got it right, because as we said earlier... Bro, I got it right. ADR. God. You know what sucks? Is that you can't even give the devil his due. You're just loving yourself. No, ADR. You don't even say, you know what, congratulations Congratulations to Alberto Del Rio Rio for winning the WWE Championship and cashing in money in the bank at the opportune time Now roll back the Roll back the audio tape, and what did you say about ADR? He's going to be the first guy to cash in and lose. What did you say about Miz? I meant it. Did it happen? It should have. It should have with ADR. No, oh, he's too big of a star. No bigger than the Miz. The car makes the star, baby. Right, Linda? Linda. What? Do you go out with guys that don't have a nice car? Take me for a ride in your Mercedes, boy. See? It's not as important. I don't know. I don't really care. He's basically is. calling you materialistic is what uh, he's doing. I I, I feel you're offensive. Wait, I never said that. It was the implied. Impli- it's what you implied. All right. <laughs> Our YouTube challenge question this week is, who sent the text to Kevin Nash at SummerSlam? Again, this week's question is, who sent the text to Kevin Nash at SummerSlam? Make sure to comment on this episode on YouTube to qualify. And unlike trivia, this isn't about getting it right or wrong. It's about being just- happy. This is just the one we like most from our comments on our YouTube page. Thanks for great discussion. YouTube.com slash Max Sport, where you can find all that. Let's go back to the phones. Let's go to Christopher in New Jersey. Christopher, you're live. Hey, how's it going, you guys? It's great to be back with you on the air again. 
You know, I've been looking at this SummerSlam controversy for the last few days, and I think I know, uh, I formed a hypothesis, if I may. Oh, hold on. An educated guy. Do you mind if I indulge on you on a hypothesis? Go right ahead. Can you spell it? Okay. Well, CM Punk, as you know, said some pretty bad things about the McMahons in the last couple of weeks before he left with the WWE title. So I believe that it was Stephanie who wanted to seek a little bit of a payback for retribution. What yes, retribution. That's what I'm thinking because all this is leaning toward one goal: retribution for for what has happened. And Alberto Del Rio saw the weak spot and cashed in his contract to get that title, and had it stolen from so that because of what he did, man, he's got a lot of he's made a bad effect to get it because of the cause he made, and now he's already made a lot of enemies. So. It's going to get really, really, really intense. You watch in the next couple of weeks. I'm guaranteeing it's going to be really hot. All right. Well, thank you for that hypothesis, that educated guess, Christopher. Do you know, you know what? what? Stephanie could have, she could have, I mean, Triple H's phone has got to be laying next to her head when uh, they're sleeping. Well, it's usually on Talk the nightstand, right? Listen, if you're Triple H, Paul, and your wife, Steph, calls Big Sexy, Kev, because she feels her husband Paul. can't get the job done. Whoa, whoa, in the ring. Bro, whoa, this, whoa, you know what? wrestling. Whoa. This is going to be interesting, right? How Absolutely. Would, how would you take it that, you know, he's the game, and he can't take care of CM Punk, but his, but his wife calls his best friend? So he's a two-count. Dude, this could be like a three-way. Wrestling like all match? different stories involved in this thing. Thank you for that call, Christopher, out in New Jersey. Is it time for trivia? I feel like it. All right. You can check out our trivia on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash pro wrestling report. Last week's trivia question was, which wrestler has appeared the most times on WWE SummerSlam? Our winner this week is Dwayne Moore with the correct answer of The Undertaker which is 15 times on SummerSlam. Is there a streak? Hmm. Oh. I don't well, think so. Well, yeah. Um, he lost to Shawn Michaels in 97. ADR is undefeated at SummerSlam. How many SummerSlam matches has Alberto Del Rio had? Oh. Well, he's undefeated. He didn't get pinned in the tag, did he? The Miz is undefeated at SummerSlam as well. Is he? Yeah, absolutely. Well, good for the Cody man. Rhodes is undefeated at SummerSlam. Uh, no, he's not. Congratulations on having one champion. You know what? I felt insincere earlier. I have two right now. Con- who else? Randy Orton. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Calculated risk. Good. You know what? When I'm racing in a race and I do triathlons, I do marathons all the time, I'm not thinking about the finish line. I'm just running. Listen, when I'm, I'm racing in running. a race, I'm going to trip the person next to me. Because okay? you're pure evil. Oh, you wouldn't do it fast, first of all. So, that trivia. All right, our trivia this week. Of course, you can find it on our Facebook page again at facebook.com slash pro wrestling report. question this week is, when did Kevin Nash first appear on WCW Nitro as part of the Outsiders? Again, the question is, when did Kevin Nash first appear on WCW Nitro as part of the Outsiders? The first you mean is- not Oz, not Vinny Vegas? As Not part of Master the Blaster, no, no. As the ask outside. Kevin Nash. Okay. All right, the first to answer this question correctly on Facebook wins our trivia this week. Go to Facebook.com. I like that. You like it, like it? Come on. Uh, we're going to take our final time out of the evening, and when we come back, we'll wrap things up with Vintage Video, our Tweet of the Week, and more. This is the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. 540 ESPN. He's not a heavyweight. No, but it's the superhero song of the week. I didn't hear that. Hit my music. Absolutely. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN. ESPN Milwaukee. Damian Nelson, along with Linda Kay, and David Hero. I want to remind you, we're back on the air next Monday night. 
after Raw. Right after WWE Raw, and Amazing Red will be our guest, making his first appearance on this program. It's next Monday night, right here on 540 ESPN and all over the you world at ESPNMilwaukee.com. About Amazing Red, that's going to be kind of a uh, salty, shootish interview, I think. He's got a lot to say. He's not pleased. Oh, I'm sure. Not pleased I'm at all. sure he's not. I mean, him and the Bucks were keys in that whole X Vision beatdown. Now they're not there anymore. We want to thank uh, all of you for submitting your themes for the heavyweights tonight. And uh, what's our theme next week? The theme of themes. You can check us out on Facebook and find that out before next week's Champions. episode. The theme of themes. I want to also let you know that PWR Primetime TV returns next week as well. And David Hero. We are pleased to share some huge news next week. We can finally talk about it. The deal is done next week. PWR Primetime Television, especially for all of our listeners and viewers in Milwaukee, very, very important news that we will share with you next week on PWR Primetime Television about our 14th season on the air. Vintage video. Each week we take a look back at a fun or important moment in professional wrestling, and this one was a little bit of both. Stephanie McMahon wins the Divas Championship on SmackDown. You guys remember that? Absolutely. The look on her face after she won that title, after doing nothing, basically getting laid on, uh, I believe it was Trish Stratus, right, that she defeated maybe? I don't know. I thought it was Miss Jackie. We'll go with that. Uh, it was just priceless. Priceless. This is Wasn't fun. that one of your former tag teams? Priceless? No. That was Cody and Ted. Yeah, the, that had nothing to do with Ted. Oh, of course, yeah. You know, I congratulated Del Rio on being the new WWE interim champion. You have not yet congratulated Cody Rhodes on being the Intercontinental Champion. Does anybody care about the IC title? Now they do. No, they don't. They will now. You know what? When, when He's he... going to bring respectability, class, athleticism, and in and and and, and, and polish to that belt. Gonna wax it up real good. I'm, make sure it's looking no great every time he sees it. At all. Mm-hmm. Intercontinental champion. Yeah, that's great. I go, this is my next big thing, and you know he's working his way up. What is this? You two. Enough any waxing, working his way up. You two need to stop. I have no idea what you're talking yeah. about. Mm-hmm. I I don't know why you go such places. It's right in front of me. Look what the the, the, the distractions on TV. Linda comes in here. She's a distraction. You, you, you break stuff all over the place, and I gotta fix it. Well, you don't don't get me upset, and I won't break anything. You know I have an, a, 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 an anger problem. Yes, you do. Or a temper tantrum. We're on Twitter, twitter.com/slash PWR Show at PWR Show. That too. Mm-hmm. And it feels like it's time for the tweet of the week. Our tweet of the week comes from at Ed Batches. Saying, ten-year-old and current Ed are loving that CM Punk and Kevin Nash are going mic to mic on Raw. Ten-year-old and current Ed, that's like me. Ten-year-old Linda and current Linda loving CM Punk and Kevin Nash. Going Linda, if you're ten, there's a lot of people in a lot of trouble. MIAW Pro Wrestling this Sunday, August 21st. Actually, Sunday, August 21st, six o'clock in Milwaukee, Coach's Pub, 5356 South 13th Street. And uh, it's going to be some good wrestling. Check I hear out. free admission. Um, it's a free show. I don't believe that's accurate, David Hero. Oh. So all seats are just $10 Oh, each. well, but if you mention PWR show, you get in for free. You didn't know that? This, that's the Armani special. That's like a that's like a virtual coupon. Virtual? Is yeah. there a promo code? Is that a Groupon special for yes. us? Yeah. It's We're a, on Groupon now? Yeah. You didn't know that? I... No, well, I guess you, you already knew that. I absolutely, I already knew that. I want to thank everybody for calling in, and uh, you know I'm very intrigued as to what you have to say about our comments on TNA Wrestling earlier in the broadcast. Send us an email to comments at pwrshow.com, and maybe, just maybe, Linda will pick you to be our fan of the week. You send in a thought-provoking email, one that will spur discussion here on this program. Thought you become. You become the fan of the week, and uh, we get a whole segment uh, talking about what you sent in. Send those emails to comments at pwrshow.com to be a part of it. David Hero, um, SmackDown. Yes. 
last week. Triple H, I think this is the second week being on Smacky Wacky. Are we going to see a bit more of a cross-branding, if you will? Maybe this brand thing is going to go away over the next few weeks or a few months. No, I doubt that. But, I mean, when you're in charge of creative with your wife, you got to be at both shows anyhow. You, yeah. get, you get paid more money when you're on TV. Yeah. Because then he gets a... Then he gets an executive salary and a, a and a talent salary. Double dipping? Absolutely. Double dip the chip? Sure, he can, he can do that too. He's Triple H. He's the game. Linda K., we asked earlier the question on Facebook, and it read as follows. Are you looking forward to Sting versus Hogan at TNA Bound for Glory? And I, told I think we have the audience. final tote. I don't know, all right, 72%. They How many? 72%. That's almost half. They, uh, sorry, there was a glitch on my computer earlier, I must say. All right, final totals, 72% saying no with only 28% saying yes. So what does that say, Delman? Have we seen... That means you know, 72 out of 100 people uh, ain't going to buy the pay-per-view. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, there's more than I that. I was opening that for discussion. But, They're going to watch it for free yeah. online. They get the stream. How do you feel about streaming? You it support de- it? It depends on the purpose. Streaming wrestling pay per view. Yes. You support it? No. You know, honestly, it doesn't make really. A bit, it doesn't make a bit of difference to me. I'm very surprised to hear this. Hey, listen, Blizzard Brawl is going to be on pay per view this year. IPPV. I mean, you should be as well, against it as I am. Well, listen, people are going to want to pay to see you versus Chris Masters. Chris Masters doesn't have a chance. And, by the way, I haven't accepted the challenge yet. That announcement will be coming on Labor Day when Labor I will Day. either accept or decline the Master Lock Challenge issued by Chris Masters on this program. I'm not a wrestler, but I've been talking to some people. I'm sure you have. Yep. You, Davey Richards you got some what? pointers from Here's him last you gotta weekend. Do. you got to go back on your team, whatever you use. And watch the old real world shows with the Miz on it. This is the award winning pro wrestling report on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com. I want to thank all of you for tuning in and being a part of the program tonight. We'll see you again on Monday night. Monday night with Amazing Red as our guest right after WWE Raw. For David Hero, Linda K. and the Cause, this is Damian Nelson saying thank you for tuning in to the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Money, oh, which one of you can get kicking low? Drop to the floor and move it slow, more. Any, any, money, oh, which one of you can get kicking low?